Hello and welcome to the Amiga Art School Online and today we're going to be looking at perspective, drawing ellipses and also proportions and these are all areas that I know can be quite complicated and frustrating and I completely understand because when I was at art college we used to have to do uh, quite an old-fashioned lesson in the evenings um, and it was all about geometry uh, which is of course the basis of um, perspective and I used to hate it and um, I failed miserably actually but I've always found that if I apply those basic rules of perspective or geometry um, to what's around me and keep it quite simple it's actually quite easy to understand and of course very useful because very often you might draw something and you think why doesn't that look quite right and it's because you've perhaps not got a vanishing points in the right place so we've not thought enough about the eye level so these are all terms I'm going to be talking to about you talking to you about later okay so there's several forms of perspective but today we're just going to look at two uh, one point perspective which is what's in front of the camera now and then two-point perspective. So let me just run through the basis of one-point perspective and for this to happen the vanishing points which are just on the top you can't see any vanishing points along the side but only on the top they all go to one point in the middle of this box on my eye level and the eye level is literally where my eyes are in relation to the object that I'm looking at. Sometimes it's called the horizon line but I always find that a bit confusing because people then imagine that they should see a seascape or a line of hills or something. So for the sake of this particular session we're just going to refer to it as the eye level. Okay, so coming outside, if we look at this house directly in front of me now with the yellow door, um, that's a perfect example of one point perspective. I mean, it's like a child's drawing of a, uh, a house. It's, everything's flat. There's no perspective involved. Now, if, however, we look at the view of the house from the side elevation, you can see there are some quite distinct uh, lines of perspective and the lines of the uh, windows and so forth are all going down the street uh, on a, a vanishing point and my eye level again is around about here so everything will vanish to that point. So coming back inside I've made a drawing of that view or, or at least something similar to it showing how the street can be seen as a one point perspective view and hopefully you can see how the line of the roofs the line of the base of the houses and the pavements, they're all going back to this one point on my eye level. And just to demonstrate where my eye level is, I've drawn uh, a sort of outline of my head. And, you know, obviously my eyes are around about here. So for your first exercise, it'd be great if you could find a square or rectangular object around your home that you can draw from. And you want the base of the object to be parallel to the edge of your paper and if you like you could try measuring it at the same time so if you keep your arm really straight lock your elbow and then you can use your fingers or your thumb to measure the length of the object along the pencil and then that can be brought back down to your paper and bear in mind as i said before that the line of the base of the object is going to be parallel to the edge of the paper and then you can mark those points off with another pencil that you might have to hand or just remember them visualize them and then go back and do the same with the height and even the perspective it's a little bit more difficult with the perspective because there's a bit of a distortion involved but you can get a good idea of that um, distance as well. So there's my drawing of this uh, box. Uh, it's quite large on the paper because um, 
I measured it, as I showed you before, and because the object's quite close to me, um, it's, it's really filled up the page. Um, but it doesn't matter. And also, try to draw the lines freehand. I know the temptation is to get out a ruler, but um, it's good practice to try and draw these lines reasonably straight. And it doesn't matter if they're a little bit wobbly or you make the odd mistake or it doesn't quite line up, but to have a go anyway. Now let's look at the box as a two-point perspective view. And you'll straight away see that there's three elevations as opposed to two in the one-point perspective view. And the lines are vanishing in that direction and over here. And those lines will end up on my eye level, which is around about here. Okay, so let's draw a two-point perspective view of the box. And as before, I'm going to measure the height and I can bring that back to my paper. I'm, a, I'm sitting a little bit further back from the one-point perspective view, so the box isn't quite so big. And so that's my starting point, the line that's closest to me. And I can then put my pencil against the edge of the box so I've got the angle to work to. And I can get that in. And the other edge is at right angles to that. But again, I can bring that back down just to check. You have to sort of estimate the depth a little bit. It's not so easy to measure um, a line in perspective. But um, roughly speaking, I think it's about there. And then you can more or less make the top of the box parallel to the bottom. Just bear in mind that these lines do need to converge so that they will meet at one point on the uh, vanishing, at the vanishing point. The same on the other side. And the upright. Again, the back of the box is going to be parallel. And the same here, parallel at the back but again, slightly converging so that these points will eventually meet as on the vanishing point. Let's now look at ellipses. I've drawn a circle on the top of the box and when it's at an angle, so when I turn it away from me um, or I sit down, it becomes a circle in perspective and that's what we call an ellipse. So this is the one point view of, of the uh, ellipse and I'm just going to draw that for you now on the box that I drew earlier. So hopefully you can see that I've now added the circle to the one point perspective box and I've drawn a line through the center which is almost straight uh, which we call the minor axes, and then the long line, um, which is almost in the middle of the perspective, but there's a little bit more distance from here to here than there is there. And then I've just almost joined the dots up to create this ellipse. I've now turned the box so that it becomes a two-point perspective view, and you'll see that the shape of the ellipse has subtly changed. I'm now going to add the ellipse to the two perspective box. And um, once again, the center lines. Uh, so that becomes the minor axis this time. And then the major axis is in this direction. And as before, there's a bit more distance between here and here than there, just allowing flat perspective difference. And once again, I can just lightly draw the shape of the circle onto the box. So I don't know if you've got a small box at home that you can practice with, um, but if not, then you could always use a mug or a cup uh, and draw your ellipses from that. So I don't know if you can see, but I've just added some little marks here to represent those axes 
that I was talking about earlier. And you can then change the axes by moving the mug around so you'll see that those points have changed in direction. To become familiar with drawn ellipses, even before you start looking at that um, mug I was just talking to you about, it's probably a good idea just to try drawing some ellipses quite loosely on the page and almost just circle the shape before you commit yourself and try different angles as well. So you might have ones that are very narrow and then you can have ones that are quite open, almost circular. And keep practicing them. You can draw over the top of them if you like until you feel a bit more confident with them. Okay, so let's draw the mug from life and I'm going to start by making sure the horizontal axis, the major axis, is parallel to the edge of the paper and looking something like that. And then the minor axis coming towards me is going to be relatively straight, a bit like that. Okay, so then trying to follow the shape of the ellipse, try to sort of ghost a nice looking ellipse around the top. Bring the side of the mug down. You can always check the height of your mug by putting it in the front and marking it beneath, just as we were doing before with the, the length of the box. And then you can add your handle here. Then you might try moving the axes around so that the axes are at a different angle. Like so, and then again, try and bring in a fairly even looking ellipse for the top of the mug. Bring the sides down again mirror the shape of the ellipse at the bottom. Try and make sure that the ellipse goes into that upright nicely so that you don't get a pinched effect which often happens and the handle is going to be at a slightly different position than before, something like that. Uh, we've looked at one and two point perspective and I've shown you how you can actually make quite complex scene, scenes reasonably easy to understand but you know if I'm you know thinking about the street and so forth but I mean I wouldn't suggest you start with something as difficult as that maybe start by looking at just drawing some cubes or rectangular shapes that you've got around you in the house. So it could be um, cereal packets, uh, a sewing box, a jewellery box, that sort of thing. And, you know, start with just a simple shape, but then you could also maybe um, open the lids of things as well and, and try drawing the perspective of, of those objects when they become slightly more complicated. And also then move on to doing the ellipses and again start with something simple like a cup, cup and saucer and see how you get on with those. Once you feel as though you've you've got something you're reasonably pleased with then of course you can always add some tone as well as, as Chris has shown you. But I think for the, for the first uh, hour or two I would only just do line drawings to really become um, acquainted with, with the whole subject of perspective and then ellipses. Anyway I'm going to put all of the uh, drawings that I've done as part of the demonstrations onto a brief so you'll be able to see them far better than you might have been able to in the video and uh, see how you get on. Do as much as you can. As I said before, uh, the more you do, the more you'll get out of it. Send me your drawings for me to have a look at and have fun. <laughs>